Hey guys, uh, Chris back from CNA Simology again. I'm getting our quick video here for you guys today. This is a uh, tried and true Sears Craftsman uh, string trimmer here we got here for you guys today. This is a 25cc engine and powers this machine here. This also takes a 40 to 1 mixture ratio. They even have it embossed on the actual identification tag as well too. So you have the size of the engine right here, which is a 25cc gas string trimmer. And you also have it on the other side over here, 40 to 1 fuel mixture, and they call it a wheat whacker on here as well too. So uh, this model specifically has the incredible pull, uh, recoil uh, pull rope on here. I personally do not like it because it's more complicated than your older design, and they tend to fail more frequently than the older ones that are so if you do um or are, are in, in the market for a sears machine try to buy a machine that does not have the incredible pull system on here but these things are none problem they are more complicated and they do fail often out there as well too so i do not recommend this uh, specific type of uh, recoil unit on these machines here so we'll go down to the actual boom shaft assembly on here uh you have a uh, combi uh, kit on this one right here basically what that means is it's similar to the uh, Sears and Husqvarna's out there where you can take your boom shaft assembly off on here you, you push this button right here you have a little button you push that button this thing basically slides off on here and you can attach a number of attachments like a leaf um, you know call a, uh, a, little, a, little, a little mini leaf blower um, attachment on the end of the boom shaft here or you can also get like a little edger attachment or some other type of attachment that they actually came with as an optional accessory in your owner's mail because your owner's mail should have all the accessories uh, for your one specific machine here for that whenever you buy it originally because it'll have in the back of the book optional accessories area and because this machine is a combi unit where you can actually take the actual boom shaft apart it will have all the listings of all the accessories you can actually purchase separately from this machine right here for that. So we'll go down to the bump head down here. Uh, this bump head, apparently the guy replaced it on here and he put a manual feed head on here. Uh, I personally do not like these designs because you have to stop and you have to waste time and you have to refeed the actual uh, string up through here. This one has, I believe, two pieces on here. You have one piece right here that goes basically that goes down inside and through the bottom comes up the other side. And another piece over here as well too, and um, that's basically how they have it on here on, on this specific one. This is this is this is 0.95. Uh uh, uh so we don't call line on this one right here i personally like the uh, the bump uh, bump heads or the automatic feed ones because you simply keep going while you're cutting your weeds out there you don't have to keep stopping and re-spooling and stopping and re-spooling it so uh, i personally recommend the um the automatic or the uh, bump head design over this one right here but this is a lot more time consuming and labor uh, I want to call I want to call labor inducing or whatever you want to call it right here because it takes longer to actually put a new string on these ones right here so I do not recommend this design right here I recommend the older bump head design so if you're looking for a new machine get the bump head or your automatic feed bump head design okay we'll go on to the back of the machine here I'll give you some information on the machines here in the back got the identification tag on this one right here it's on the bottom, right below the actual muffler assembly, guys. So you have your identification tag, your emissions. This is a 2016 model specifically, and this is made in December, or I should say, sorry about that, November 2016. You have your emissions tag right there, November 2016, made for Sears Brands Management Corporation. And the emissions period compliance is 50 hours right here for that. And you also have your secondary identification tag for the model number here as well, too. It's right down here. Mall number. Let me see if I can zoom in here for you guys. You have a better, better shot. There we go. Sorry about that. Mall number 316-794-370. This is a MTD brand machine. Even though they don't actually list it on here, but it is a MTD brand. I'll give you a shot of the back on here as well, too. There you go. There's your muffler assembly back. Right, so your muffler assembly is over here, and this is basically your whole covering for your whole back end, so you can uh, keep the uh, muffler from not being touched by your hands, because uh, they do not want you to burn your hands on, or hence the reason why they have the identification tag right on the top here. It says it, it's extremely hot. Caution: Do not touch the back portion of the machine whenever it's running or after it's got done running, because it's, it'll be extremely hot back here. So always keep your hands away from the actual muffler assembly. Over here, we got the carb over here. We got a brand new carb on this machine right here. 
Uh, the guy was, was was originally complaining the machine would not start, and he, it kept on dying out for him. So we had to get a new Walbro carburetor. This is a genuine Walbro carburetor, as the name it has right on the top right here. So this is a Walbro carburetor right here for that specifically. And we also had to put new fuel lines on here as well too. We put uh, typical Tiger on fuel lines on here because I only use the best. I don't use any kind of knockoff Chinese garbage out there for that. So brand new fuel lines. And we also had to clean out the actual gas tank down here as well too. Uh, we put a new fuel filter in there as well too because the fuel filter he had, it was it, it was all brown and funny and unfortunately. I don't know what the guy was actually doing, but the, fuel, the, the actual fuel filter was contaminated with something. I don't know what it was, but it was all brown. I really don't know what, what kind of contamination what kind of gas he was originally using in the machine originally so i'm not going to venture to guess and if anybody cares or to know um we always recommend using identification tags on your machines out there this guy got a, a repair tag on this one right here i typically buy these online and stuff like that because you can buy them in bulk or like 30 bucks for about about three or four hundred of them and it's uh, it's a it's a nifty thing to keep with your machines because if uh, you're starting out and you want to identify whose machine goes to whose job and which goes to what, you always a good idea to buy a identification tag to put on the machine originally when it comes in the door so you don't forget whose machine is whose for what job and what kind of problems you're having with it because you have all the um, all the um you know call specifics like when the guy dropped it off, uh, the name and date, uh, address, Oracle of the machine, uh, the work need to be done, the salesperson. The amount of money he brought over originally for the job, plus you have your claim check stub down here in the bottom as well too. So that's what it is. And there's another portion or another photograph and a video here of the actual carb assembly, the new fuel lines. And we'll go ahead and fire this thing up here for you guys. And I'll show you how it runs here. So bear with me here for a couple seconds. I put my camera down. Okay, we got it fired up here for you guys. It's idling pretty good now. No problems with idling. I'm going to gun it up here. Need a good shot to gun it up. Okay. Sounds great. Show the bump head down there. It's idling okay, so the bump head is perfectly fine as it is with the low speed of the floor or the eye I should say, sorry about that. And it's working great, no problem with it down there. Idling nice and it's gunning up quite well. And we'll go ahead and shut it off. Let's get the kill switch right here. This is one. Zero for on and off. So there we go. Man, the machine runs great. It's ready to go back to the customer. Uh, typically, th these carbs are about 25, 30 bucks on these machines. That are plus, you have to replace the intake gasket, and they also have a um, uh, rubber o-ring behind the actual carb right here for that so uh, it's always good to replace that and put some oil on as well too so you have one intake gasket where the air box mates up against the carb on the intake side and you have a secondary gasket it's, it's, it's like a circular rubber, rubber o-ring goes behind here and actually mates up to the actual uh, block on the um we don't call it intake manifold assembly right here for that because you have a rubber o-ring goes down here and you have a typical uh, flat uh, gasket behind here so it's always good to replace them both and put a dab of oil on the one here that ba basically mates up to the actual intake block right here specifically for that so I'll give you a shot of with the actual um uh, bag for the actual part here is for the carb so let me show you that right now here <clears throat> okay this is what it is right here carb assembly 7530619 this is the identification for the actual carb assembly, 7530619. So you can get a better shot here. There you go, sorry about that. 7530619 that's a carb assembly. And you can usually have these things on eBay for like 25, 30 bucks. You just gotta look for them out there because I typically buy a lot of parts on um, eBay out there because you can buy in mass quantity and you can get a relatively cheap price for a lot of these machines that are so don't be um you know you know don't be hesitant about going on eBay and buying uh, some like you know new OEM parts. The only thing is, you have to verify that the parts are OEM and they're the correct part for your machine. Because there's unfortunately there's a lot of Chinese knockoff crap out there on eBay, 
and you must verify that parts you're buying for your job or, or, or for the actual machine you're working on are OEM parts. So you always have to look on the actual parts identification saying OEM parts, it's not aftermarket or you know um, OEM spec or you know some other uh, we'll call term where they, they try to use and they say oh it's it's OEM it's OEM spec or it's uh, you know OEM like or something like that on so always look for it saying OEM spec or um, you know OEM spec or um, some kind of aftermarket because those are dead giveaways meaning the part is not the same thing as what it had on the factory originally is they look for OEM the part number and you also have to look for the actual name of like Walbro or Zama on the actual outside of the carburetor. Like this one has this one has Walbro on here, so it's a genuine Walbro carburetor, so it's guaranteed to work perfectly fine. Because unfortunately, a lot of Chinese um, junk they have on eBay is uh, the quality is not there, unfortunately. And you can get a knockoff car for like 10 or 15 bucks, but the only problem is that carburetor will not last as long as the original carburetor under guys. So just be mindful of that. So just uh, consider that when you're 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 um, you know trying to figure out if you want to get the $30 OEM genuine carburetor or the $10 Chinese knockoff carburetor. So if anybody has any comments, questions, whatnot, here's another shot of the machine here. Feel free to leave me a message here, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as humanly possible. I'll see you guys. Have a nice day.